Hare Krishna and welcome everyone to our Sunday session on Vector of Instruction. And we are discussing, we'll be discussing today verse 6, uh, Defects in Devotees. It's a very interesting topic, a lot of scope for group discussion. Hopefully all of you will participate and make it more fruitful, uh, good learning experience for all of us. So let's uh, proceed for that. Um, we start with the Pranam Mantra for the Pratish Swami, who is the author of this book, Shri Chaitanya, Namo Bhishtam, Snapitam, Vyamantri Kalo, Swayam Rupa Padam Mandhim, Padapi Swapadam. When will Shri Rupa Goswami come? We have established within this material world a mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, give me shelter under his lotus <coughs> feet. So we'll do, uh, we've discussed five verses so far in the Nectar of Instruction, and we'll do a quick uh, recap of those five verses in a very, very brief way. We'll discuss, we'll spend elaborate time on those, so we'll not go in detail of those, but uh, we'll just touch upon the important topics that we discuss in those themes that we discuss in those verses. So, so the Nectar of Instructions are the set of instructions for those who wish to sincerely practice devotion service. So we'll go to become sincere devotees, who wish to become sincere devotees. Now, who are, who, who are these people who these devotees have understood that Krishna is the goal, ultimate goal of life and bhakti or the devotional service is the only process. So we need both the things. We need to, so for example, if we need to go from here to Mayapur, we need a uh, we need to understand why should we go to Mayapur or why should we go to Vrindavan and then we need to know how we can go there. What are the means that we can utilize in order for us to go from our present location to that location. So uh, by studying Bhagavad Gita, we understood that Krishna is the goal. Yonam evam esam murhu janati purushottamam sa sarva vidha bhajati imam sarva bhavana bhava. 15 chapter 19 verse Krishna says that if you only know me, once you know me after studying all the Vedas or forget Vedas, you just study Bhagavad Gita and you will know that I am the ultimate goal to be achieved in the human form of life. And when you come to this understanding, when you come to this conviction, come to this conclusion that my goal of my life is to attain Krishna and Krishna is the goal of my life and then we must know how best we can attain our goal. What are the different paths available? What are the different uh, ways in which I can approach Krishna? And uh, Krishna discuss all those ways and concludes that Bhakti Yoga or the devotional service is the, is the best suited for this current age. And best suited is easy. Tasyaham Sulabha Sulabha Partha Bhakti is easy. None of the other uh, uh, other paths are kleshodhik. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 12th chapter that uh, there will be klesha uh, in the in the pursuance of um, in the, in the, in the if you follow other path, they are filled with klesha. They are not does not guarantee success, and plus the path is not uh, enjoyable itself. So, uh, so bhakti on the other hand is. Uh, is joyful. Kushan teacher, Amun teacher, the last uh, time, last session, we discussed that verse. And uh, so, Bhakti it can, is an enjoyable experience. It purifies heart. It is uh, can be performed with joy and it gives the best possible result in the shortest possible time. So, it's a it's a best deal that we have got. Uh, in the, and it is doable by anybody without any qualification, without any prerequisites uh, and, and it can be done in only human form of life and all of us have got human body have got understanding of this this uh, got this knowledge that uh, Krishna is the supreme goal to be achieved and devotion service uh, is the is the best way to approach attain that goal so now when we get that understanding and we want to become sincere devotees, we need guide. So we need a bona fide guru. And Dr. Goswami started this book by explaining the qualities that one should seek in a guru. A guru should be able to control, regulate his mind, body, and senses, and should know Krishna. 
should know Krishna and should have loving attachment to Krishna and should be engaged in serving Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. So all of these things are important and uh, this is what we saw, Vacho Vedam, Manasakro Vedam and uh, everything that what was covered in the first verse. So typically Guru is the one who knows the way, who knows the way, who shows the way and who walks the same way. Now that is Guru. He knows uh, that Krishna is the goal to be achieved and he knows how to attain. So he knows the way. He shows the way. He's ready to show uh, a, a new devotee the way, uh, how to perform bhakti, how to become a nice devotee, how to purify one's heart, how to chant Hare Krishna Mahamitra, how to read Bhagavad Gita, how to understand Bhagavatam. And they are prepared to go out of their way to help any sincere soul. And so he knows the way, he shows the way, and then he walks the way. He walks the same way. He does not have any other attachments. He does not have plan B, plan C, plan D. He is also committed to walk on the same way that he has shown to his disciples. Uh, so that is the quality. These are the qualities in the group that we should seek in the Guru. <clears throat> when we accept such a person as our Guru, what will he do? He will teach us what he knows. And this is what he knows. He knows Krishna is the Supreme. So he will teach us about how Krishna is the Supreme, why Krishna is Supreme. He will glorify Krishna and he will help understand us Krishna in its tattva, in his tattva. So, anybody who knows the appearance of the, the, the tattva behind the appearance and the pastimes performed by Krishna, uh, does not have to take birth again because that person will attain the uh, can go back back to God head. So, so this is uh, so this is what we will ex we should expect to learn from our guru, and uh, it could be it could bring transformation into our life. It will not be a uh, BAU business as usual for us anymore. If we wish to become a sincere devotee, we will have to introduce few changes into our lifestyle. We'll have to get up early in the morning. We'll at least have to endeavor to get up early in the morning. We may not like it. We may still have to do it. Um, you know, we may uh, have, we may be prepared to follow four regulative principles. We may not want it, uh, but we, we will have to follow it in order for us to continue to create mercy from Guru and guidance from Guru. So that is going to bring transformation into our life. And these uh, that will that guru will ensure that he does it. Further, Rupa Goswami explains the six activities which we, if we keep indulging it, if we continue to perform, will destroy our body. It is like pouring water on the wood which we intend to burn. Now it will cause a lot of smoke and it will ensure that the wood doesn't get burned. So our purpose is defeated and at the same time we are getting a lot of pain because the smoke will cause a lot of discomfort. So it's a lose-lose situation. If you wish to become a sincere devotee, we should stop doing these six activities. And atyahara, prayasasya, prajalpa, niyamadraha. So this Rupa Goswami lists those six activities and discuss those in detail. Uh, well, how they can be how they can be harmful for our bhakti. But uh, Rupa Goswami brings the discussion on the positive tracks immediately in the third verse by saying, by listing another six activities, if we do those activities, it will prasiddhati, shadbhir bhakti prasiddhati, it will enhance our bhakti and that is what we want to do. So bhakti is not performed alone. We cannot become a devotee alone and we think that, uh, you know, it's all in between me and Krishna. Uh, no, no, it doesn't happen that way. Krishna does not like to be alone. Krishna is always with his devotees, reciprocating with different prasas. So Krishna just is not a boring personality. He is, he always wants to do something and he always wants to reciprocate with his devotees in different moves. And devotees, um, also need to learn and understand this aspect about bhakti, that it is not between him and him, Krishna alone. It is between Krishna, his devotees and us. So uh, we must learn, now because devotees are also there in the picture and Krishna is also there in the picture, we must learn 
how to interact with both of them. We must learn the ways in which we should associate with devotees and we should interact with Lord. What should be our mentality while we're dealing with Lords and Lord's topics, while, while we're chanting, while we're worshipping, while we're offering obeisances. What should be our mood? What should be our mentality? And how should we associate with devotees? Now, Sri Rupa Goswami switch discussion to this. So six ways in which we can lovingly interact with people in general, especially with devotees. That's explained in the fourth verse. Sharvidham uh, Priti Lakshanam, the six symptoms of love. Uh, that is giving gifts, receiving gifts, uh, feeding devotees with prasad and accepting prasad then offered by devotees and bhujham akshati prashtam sharing our heart and listening to other peoples. So these six things when done uh, amongst devotees, it will, uh, this is, these are symptoms of loving exchange that is taking place between devotees. And in the last session we discussed, the fifth verse, Rupa Goswami takes this discussion deeper that uh, you, everybody who, who is seen in the temple is not a devotee uh, at the same level. They are all devotees, but they are not necessarily at the same level. So we should be able to distinguish between devotees. A uh, new devotee uh, or, 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 or is classified as a Kanishtha Adhikari or a very new devotee who is very enthusiastic about Krishna consciousness but does not know much has does not have very deep understanding of the scriptures and uh, Madhyama Adhikari is a, a one step above him and Uttama Adhikari is the best of uh, uh, pure devotee uh, and then so these at, at our level we should do where we stand where we stand and we should know who other who we should have a similar understanding about others also that where other people who with whom I daily interact, they stand. And uh, it's obviously uh, so and 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 and, and uh, that should show that shows that reflect our our own maturity as a devotee. If we are able to make this distinction, it shows that we are, are uh, we are better than those who are unable to distinguish that uh, that they may treat all devotees as same or they may completely ignore the devotees. Uh, and better of than them. And then, uh, so it reflects on our own consciousness and it affects our interactions. It affects how we will interact with each of them. So if we happen to be dealing with the Kanishta Adhikari and or, or the new devotees, we can be compassionate with them. We can guide them whatever way we can. If we happen to be uh, with the people who are Bhajama Adhikari and uh, and we can be seeking guidance on them. We can be uh, we can be friends with them. And Uttama we should be we should be longing to associate with them. We should uh, we should have we should be eager to hear to them, hear when they speak, and we should be eager to serve them in any way possible. And such Uttama Adhikaris can be accepted as uh, spiritual masters. So that is how we will. We should interact with the devotees. Now, uh, Sri Rupa Goswami is going to take this discussion further, uh, deeper amongst the devotees. Now, now devotees, uh, some devotees may appear to be a faulty uh, by external vision. So, uh, Rupa Goswami is going to talk about that aspect. That uh, drashtai, I will just read the synonyms first and then we will go to the verse. That drashtai means seen by ordinary vision. Uh, swabhava, swabhava, swabhava janaitair, swabhava janaitair is uh, by born of one's own nature. Vapu, <coughs> vapushaha is of the body, cha, and doshaha by the faults. And then, so basically the bodily faults are visible, visible bodily faults. And uh, that is what Sri Rupa Goswami is talking about. That uh, prakruta uh, na prakrutvam iha bhakta jana bhakta janasya pashe na prakrutam iha bhakta janasya pashe means uh, the prakruta in the state of being material in the world of the pure devotee one should see 
Ganga, and then Rupa Goswami gives example of Ganga, that Ganga, uh, <coughs> Ganga ma, Ganga ma basam na khalu budu budu fena pankair bra, Brahma dravatva Brahma dravatva apavachati nira dharma that uh, now Ganga in Ganga we may see sometimes in the rainy season especially the the water doesn't always look clean there could be mud it could be appear to be muddy it could appear to be uh, having some bubbles and some uh, you know the foam get formed on the water it could be due to the contamination as well but it could also be due, due to the due to the rains that have happened in the the, the, the mountains so in that way the water of ganges appears to be impure uh, to the northern region but those who have understanding of the spiritual nature of that water does not care about that and they will still take part in such water. <laughs> so translation being situated in his original Krishna conscious position, a pure devotee does not identify with, with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from a materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee is having a body born in a low family, a body with a bad complexion or deformed body and uh, or a disease or informed body. The Prabhupada gives example, but expands the, the the text and give insert in the, in the translation the examples to make the point correctly, not, you know, understanding <laughs> to, to be able to understand the point correctly. That these examples are not there in the Sanskrit text, but Prabhupada insert them so that we get the perspective from where Rupa Goswami is coming. Now uh, the translation goes further that according to ordinary vision. Such imperfections may seem prominent in the body of a pure devotee, but despite such seeming defects, the body of a pure devotee cannot be polluted. Now, Prabhupada uh, brings in the example that used that was used by Ashura Rupa Goswami in the second word line, uh, that it is exactly like the waters of the Ganges, which sometimes during the rainy seasons are full with bubbles, foam and mud. The Ganga water... Ganges water do not become polluted. Actually, the Ganges water do not become polluted because it gets its spiritual potency from the Lord uh, because it touches the feet of the Lord and then it's going down and then therefore it is always pure. So those who are advanced in spiritual understanding will bathe in the Ganges without considering the condition of the water. Without con considering the condition of the water. Consider con Condition of the water means external appearance of the water, of Ganges, that may have bubbles, mud, foam, etc. Due to any reason, due to <clears throat> the Shruta Goswami has used the reason of rainy sins, but now uh, because we, we, we can understand that the, because the factories are, um, you know, uh, using these, these, these rivers to, to flush their drain in, 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 uh, out, and because of that also some pollution may uh, happen in the, the, into the river. So that's a part, but none of those can pollute water of Ganges. It still retains its potency of, uh, of uh, which which gets from the, by touching the feet of the lawn. Uh, none of it is uh, capable of, uh, you know, um, polluting it. <laughs> so the water of Ganges always remain pure. So the essential message that we are getting in this verse is that, a devotee engaged in loving service of Krishna might not be perfect in all respects. Prabhupada often used to give example of a postman, that a postman is not rich, but as long as he delivers you your money order of 1000 rupees, he is doing his job well and you should have no problem with it. You should not worry whether he is rich or not. Um, as long as he does his job well, uh, you know, you should be okay, you should be happy. Time. Similarly, a devotee may not be perfect in all respect. So if one if if one only sees such a devotee and find defects in the body or find faults in their action, now such vision shows our material vision. Such vision is uh, we are seeing devotees only materially. Uh, Rupa Goswami is warning us against such seeing as it will be offensive to a devotee and can become obstruction in the progress on the path of bhakti. It is offensive. One, it is a Vaishnava Aparant. And second, it becomes an obstruction for our progress. So our, it becomes a roadblock for our progress on the path of bhakti. If you want to attain Krishna, 
we must uh, be we must be careful uh, from not committing any offense to the feet of Krishna or the feet of Krishna. And um, anything that prevent us from becoming a nice devotee, we should avoid doing those things. So a devotee should be seen if for their intention to serve Krishna. A devotee should not. So there should be a material. There is a material vision and there is a spiritual vision. Uh, what we should see, we should see devotee um, how with their for their intention to serve Krishna, their actions perform for the pleasure of Krishna. As long as these two criteria are met, uh, you know we should ignore the other defects and the faults that we see in our devotee. That's the sum and substance of the and. Uh, of this, sir. So let's uh, discuss about the below personalities, how their externals did not affect their bhakti. Haridas Thakur, so you can give a little bit background of uh, why they are here. Haridas Thakur, who Haridas Thakur was, and how their, what was his external, um, and how it didn't affect their bhakti, how he became a great devotee of God. You can start raising hands. Uh, it can be a very quick activity. Um, all of these are famous personalities. Hopefully, all of you can speak about them. Yes, Nupur. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Pranam. Yes, Prabhuji. Haridas Thakur uh, had taken birth in a Mohammedan family, Mohammedan family, but Mahaprabhu uh, considered Haridas Thakur as Namacharya because he was a very pure devotee of the Lord. Uh, he used to chant one lakh name. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm mistaking something, but he used to chant many, many thousands and thousands of names of the Lord in the in a, in one day. So yes, Mahaprabhu, that's correct. Yeah, very nice. Thank you so much. And uh, he also had uh, defeated Maya Devi yeah, when he right. had uh, she had taken uh, come to take her uh, take his test. Yes, absolutely. So very nice. Uh, and uh, very nicely explained. He was born in a Mumbadian family. So externally, he was uh, so so the the, the Nawab Shah or the, the the king then um how he came to know of that Haridas Thakur is uh, chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra or becoming a devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Lord Krishna. Not that Muslims went and tell him. The Hindus only went and told him. Told the king that complained that yeah, this person is uh, not only chanting, he's trying to teach our religion to us. So because he was able to, he got so much knowledge and people would, he would easily defeat people in argument. So people were very uncomfortable. Those Hindus, so-called Hindus, uh, they went and complained to the king that you should check this person. He's a, he's a, he's a Muslim. So, and that's how Haridas came, Thakur came to the attention of the king at that time. And then he was punished, but uh, he, he is Namacharya as a uh, Mataji explained very beautifully. Uh, Sanatan Goswami. Uh, yes, Vikas Vajit. Hare Krishna Prabhupada, Dandra Pranam. So, uh, as we hear from uh, senior devotees and Shastras that Sanatan Goswami, though he was uh, carrying out the ministerial duties and all the time he was very busy in uh, the affairs, state affairs, but internally he was actually always uh, conscious that how how I can approach Lord and uh, how no, I how I externally what was his external what Ex one can find fault with external said so are like Prabhuji that uh, they were converted to Muslims and uh, they were always busy in uh, the ministerial activities and uh, uh, there was there is no relation of those with the devotional service of uh, to Lord and uh, that is why they, they seem yes. to be they were no devotees, but internally they were internalizing that uh, when to read Bhagavatam, how to become uh, uh, more and more intense in the devotional practices. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Very nice explain that they were uh, they were they were they were converted into Muslims. They were serving a Muslim king, the uh, Bir Khas, and uh, the, the that will come. The name of Rupa Goswami, Sarvam Goswami were Muslim names. So though they were born in a Sarasov Brahmin family, they actually because of their service, they converted themselves into the Muslims and they got Muslim names. So, and uh, they were serving the Muslim king, who was obviously not like a Parikshit Maharaj, who was not a king like Parikshit Maharaj. They were in the service of the 
of a of a sinful king, and uh, they were protecting dharma. They were helping devotees, uh, you know, maintain and and protect the the spiritual culture at that time. They were helping devotees in their capacity as uh, ministers, as powerful personalities in those their respective kingdoms. So they they helped preserve and maintained the dharma. At the same, but externally, they were actually wearing, they were uh, living like uh, they were living in the palace, and externally they were uh, carrying Muslim names. So, uh, so that so that you know the external they were practically unqualified to become uh, pure devotees. But uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally declared them as Goswamis. Uh, a Swami is means a master of their senses. So, next personality on the list is uh, King Prataparudra. Anybody else uh, knows about him? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Nandavat uh, Pranam Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. So, King Prataprudra was the uh, king in Odisha, in Puri, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing his devotional services. And when he, and he uh, being a king, he actually finally became a devotee of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and a follower, a strong follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, but uh, he had all the external influences from uh, the uh, Jagannath uh, Puri temple uh, from the Purahit there, who did not initially uh, like uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a Mahaprabhu, and they influenced the king's mind uh, to avoid him. But however, uh, so King Prataprudha had uh, full information about the, uh, the, the, the type and nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his, his devotion towards the Lord Jagannath. So that is why he, he got finally a follower. Even if he was influenced and he was the king and he had all the powers to do what he wanted. Yeah. So uh, King Prataprudha being the king, uh, Mahaprabhu refused to meet him. He was a pure devotee of Lord and he was always wanting to meet Mahaprabhu and Sarvabhama Bhattacharya and other senior devotees. They uh, put in a word to Mahaprabhu saying that uh, he is he's a nice king. He is a very dharmic king. He is a pious person. You should give him an audience. But Mahaprabhu refused. He said, what will the world think of me if I am a sannyasi? I cannot go and sit with kings uh, who are living in palaces with their, with their many, many wives, many, many children enjoying a lot of wealth and a lot of... Uh, so, I mean, they are completely neck deep into the sense gratification. How am I going to give them an audience and what will be my reputation after that? So, Mahaprabhu externally um, was was refusing, but internally he knew King Prataprudha as pure devotee. So, eventually Mahaprabhu accepted King Prataprudha as, as his uh, devotee and um, gave him his mercy, gave him his audience. Uh, Jadabharata, Jadabharata Again, uh, hopefully, a lot more hands should go up. Uh, all of you know the story of Jada Bharat comes in uh, Bhagavatam. Uh, he was Bharat Maharaj in his previous birth, then becomes a deer, get attached to a deer, becomes deer, and then uh, becomes get born as a Jada Bharat Brahman in, in his third verse. So, anybody would else like to share about Jada Bharat? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Krishna Prabhuji. Hare 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 Krishna Prabhuji. उस बच्चे की उन्होंने जान बचाई थी और वो उस बच्चे में आसक्त हो गए थे और उसको उनको हिरण के बच्चे से इतना प्यार हो गया था कि वो भक्ति उनकी भक्ति कम हो गई और जब उनके मृत्यु का समय आया तब भी वो हिरण के बच्चे के बारे में सोच रहे थे कि उनके जाने के बाद हिरण के बच्चे का क्या होगा तो इसलिए उनका अगला जन्म हिरण का हुआ और जो उनकी प्रीवियस भक्त होने के वजह से मेमोरीज थी प्रीवियस बर्थ जन्म की तो जब 
वो उनके नेक्स्ट जन्म में जब वो मनुष्य जन्म के मनुष्य के जन्म में आए तो उनको पहले के मेमोरी की वजह से उन्होंने सबसे आसक्ति कम कर दी और जड़ मतलब किसी से बात नहीं करते थे और सिर्फ मन में ही भक्ति करते थे और उन्होंने फिर भक्ति करके मतलब प्रभु जी एक्सप्लेन नहीं कर पा रही भरत महाराज वॉज Uh, as we as they say that he was such a renounced person at young age he gave up his kingdom palace the rule of this whole planet uh, uh, and all the comforts of his palace and went to forest for uh, remembering krishna for concentrating focusing on krishna and eventually uh, you know when he when the time came to leave his body he became got attached to deer got deer's body to deer's body gave up deer's body and then got into this brahmana body of jada bhagat and he didn't wanted to mess things up so extremely he couldn't even learn anything his father brahman father was tried to teach him something that how they he was always wondering how, how this boy will survive because he just know nothing not as a brahmana you should learn vedas you should learn some scriptures you should have some knowledge using which you should be able to do your udara nirvaha uh, you should be able to feed yourself at least and then have a family feed the family maintain a family how will you do if you know nothing if you act like a jada bharat uh, or as as he was acting it was very difficult and uh, his his siblings other brothers also ignored him they used to give him very uh, very bad food to eat and used used to give him animal like duties and they treated him just like an animal who does not who can't speak who can't there's no cannot there's no intellect that they perceived that this man can ever have but uh, that got demonstrated when the king rahi when he instructed king rahuvan a very beautiful story comes in the bhagavatam mata ji uh, ashwini varkar mata ji is very regular reader of shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita and i'm not surprised that unhone ye bataya bahut acche se thank you so much mata ji uh the last personality uh, we can go on with this list but last personality for considering time constraint is sukadev goswami zui yes hari krishna so uh, Suk- uh, sukadev goswami was in his mother's womb till the age of 16 and as soon as he came out he just left all of his or the home that he was born in and was to go everywhere he he never put on clothes uh so which to the external world looks very odd but in fact he was such an exalted personality he was the one who spoke the bhagavatam etc so yeah thank you so much so externally uh, it may appear to be uh, it may appear to be an action of a madman uh, walking or uh, walking around without clothes but he but nobody considered that you know that he passed by a pond where few females were taking um a uh, bath and they didn't bother they didn't bother to cover their bodies but as soon as the his father was following him chasing him and uh, gasdev as soon as gasdev arrived on the scene they immediately came out and covered themselves by clothes because uh, gasdev as a grahastha was differentiating between a, a male and female body but he had no such distinction so from the moment he was born he was liberated and uh, he simply walked out of a uh, walked out of home and that's how uh, the sudev goswami uh, to the external world might appear to be uh, like a mad person but internally he was such a great devotee that he ultimately and he ultimately spoke bhagavatam to parikshit maharaj and which which helped him attain krishna at the end of his uh, life in the most important moment of his life so uh, let's move on and uh, so when one should so the whole point is uh, that one should not criticize the bodily defect of a pure devotee and uh, if there are such defects you know they should be overlooked 
Um, and what should be taken into account is the spiritual master's main business, which is devotional service, pure service to the Supreme Lord. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 9.30, Api Chetu Sudhuracharo Bhajante Imam Ananya Bhav. Sadhur Eva Samanya Paham. Samyog Vyavasthito Vyavasthito Hi Saham. Even if a devotee uh, it sometimes might seems to be engaged in abominable activities. Sudurat Duracharo is bad activities, and Sudurachao is very abominable abominable activities. That even if they are engaged in very, very horrible kind of they got engaged into very, very horrible kind of activities also. However, if they continue to perform, continue to be engaged in the loving devotion service to the Lord then they need not be considered. They need, should be considered as a sadhu. Uh, they should be considered as a sadhu. Now, a saintly person, because of his actual identity, is that one of one engaged in the living service of the Lord. In other words, he is not to be considered as an ordinary human being. <laughs> we'll have two more discussions. Now, one may wonder, one may wonder that why uh, why there are faults in a pure devotee? If a, if he is a pure devotee, why uh, one may wonder why we have faults in the devotees and that to a pure devotee. For example, uh, you know, we had many examples that uh, Prabhupada used to not speak Sanskrit or uh, at times you know, verses also he used to, uh, you know, incorrectly pronounce or uh, sometimes or uh, uh, some wrong words used to use in the verses. <clears throat> so, if he's pure devotee, why at all they have faults? You know, Prabhupada was not very attractive looking or uh, externally, he was very short. Not, you know, if he was a pure devotee, he could be six feet tall, very handsome, very charismatic, very charming, he could have been that as well. But he was very short and probably, you know, he will not be amongst his disciples who were all six feet tall, strong Americans, Europeans, boys and girls. He used to look actually very, very small, uh, very, barely five feet tall. So the externally, you know, but one may wonder why we have faults in the in the devotees in the first place. Is it uh, due to their bad past karma? And how can we understand this and act while interacting with those devotees? And take an example. A child is crying and mother is thinking that he must be experiencing some pain. And that pain could be some pain could be due to some bad karma in his past life. Now, we'll, let's take an example. We'll have again a small, small group discussion. You can raise hand if you want to speak. And uh, those who have not spoken, I encourage them to speak now. <laughs> a child is crying and mother is thinking that um, his crying may be because he's experiencing some pain. Now, if he's getting pain, uh, then it could be due to some bad karma of that this child must have, you know, committed some bad activities in his past life. And because of that, he's getting the fruit. Is she wrong in this thinking? And second question is, what should, what should, should, be, uh, what should she do? I hope all are listening. It's not very difficult question. Uh, feel free to unmute and speak, or feel free to raise hand. And we can. Yes, sir. Uh, Proji, in my opinion, uh, she should uh, act upon the. Uh, she should do her own karma as a mother, and uh, whatever the child need to suffer as far as karma, definitely he will be suffering. But. As a mother, he should perform her karma uh, 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 towards her child. And also, uh, when she, whatever she is uh, performing the karma at that particular time, she should just surrender it to God or give it to, you know, uh, 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 submit it to God and saying that whatever is there, I am performing my karma and whatever is there in her fate, you do it and try to get relief from the pain. So that is the... Uh, uh, actions you should do that it, as per my opinion. Okay. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Anamita Maharaj and then Apo 
CPH two five seven seven. Kindly rename yourself, uh, whoever this participant is. But they have raised hand. I'm very happy. Uh, but please rename so we know who you are. Hari yes, Krishna, Prabhuji. Yes, yes. Hari Krishna yes. Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Uh, so in this case, I feel the mother should uh, definitely do address to the, the child's uh, problem uh, to her best possible abilities as she is the mother. and uh, But not lament on like uh, on what is like why she is, uh, her child is suffering so much and like we keep on blaming God, why God has given such problems to my child, uh, what wrong did she, he do. And uh, as the child grows up, the mother should train the child, uh, like uh, as per our uh, uh, like acharyas, what uh, on on these, like how should he clear his karma and all. So this is the way I should feel the mother should act, rather than okay. uh, like uh, yeah, Hari Krishna Prabhu. Okay, thank you, thank you Mataji, Hari Krishna. So this uh, yeah, uh, Apo C P H two five seven. Yeah, Hari Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Jyoti here. Jyoti okay. here, Jyoti Krishna. Yeah. Sorry, this is a new mobile, so I could not rename. Uh, uh, Prabhuji, uh, basically it is understood that uh, everyone is on a spiritual journey and uh, the material world is inherently imperfect. Uh, so devotees may have faults due to their past conditioning, uh, but the emphasis uh, is always on spiritual growth and progress. So... Uh, the uh, it's seen as an opportunity for uh, uh, self improvement and a deeper uh, devotion to krishna okay, uh, okay. so the un understanding uh, is that uh, sincere devotion and uh, a commitment to uh, spiritual practices can uh, gradually overcome uh, these imperfections mm -hmm. So is she wrong in her thinking that uh, about the karma theory? She is linking the pain to the karma. Uh, is 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 that what she should have thought? She should not have thought. Is she right in thinking this way or wrong in thinking this way? Any specific comment on that? The second seems to be a unanimous answer that she should do what need to be done to take care of the baby as baby is crying. But the first question is slightly. I'm still not getting very clear. Uh, Answer on that. Uh, Sulega Madhaji, uh, you want to say something? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Mujhe, uh, Prabhuji, Mujhe lagta hai, she is wrong because uh, jabhi bacha rota hai, to first she is why he, he is rowing, uh, crying, uh, whether he is hungry or whether he, he has got some. Uh, means kuch laga hai usse body pe ya kuch wo check kare ya fir dekhe ki usse bhook lagi hai kya aur us usab se wo uska karma kare ki khane de ya fir wo kuch first aid ho to first aid kare aise mujhe lag raha hai prabhu hare krishna hare krishna mili mata ji hare krishna prabhu ji randavat pranam prabhu ji mujhe bhi lagta hai ki i mean she is wrong in her thinking unko pehle bacche ke discomfort ko address karna chahiye बाद में अगर वो फिर लॉन्ग रन में होता है देन तो शी विल प्रे टू द गॉड कि मेरे बच्चे को ठीक कर दो बट ब्लेमिंग वाली यहाँ पे या बैड कर्मा वाला थिंकिंग नहीं आएगा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण प्रॉब्लम पर्सन हैज अर्न मनी यूजिंग ऑनेस्ट मीन्स इज ऑन सम वेल्थ and one fine day or night whatever uh, he gets robbed now he goes to king and complains and now this is what king is thinking a king is thinking that this robbery he suffered due to some bad past karma even though he might be acting honestly in this life or the baby to khair theek hai baby is baby he has not done anything in this life but this man has acted honestly throughout this current life and has accumulated wealth with all legal means and uh, no king is also thinking that uh, when he goes to king for uh, with a complaint that he has been robbed please cash the king and return my wealth <clears throat> now king is thinking that okay whatever has happened could have happened could not have happened without you know you have some bad karma that is getting fructified now so again the same question is king right or wrong in his thinking and what should he do 
should you should see some new hands um bhageshwar mata ji you want to say something hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna prabhu ji chetan prabhu ji you are saying okay ah, yes, yes. yeah yeah uh so can i explain this yes, can yes, i put my views absolutely yes yeah so what uh, what i think <clears throat> over here that yes the king is thinking that yes robbery uh, what robbery what has happened to uh, uh, his uh, uh, the person of his uh, kingdom so particularly uh, yes he is thinking that may be of uh, past karma but particularly the king should not uh, go away from his own karma means particularly he has to protect uh, uh, his uh, his kingdoms and his people so he should not go away with his karma and he should try to identify who has actually done this and uh, try to get his wealth back to him parallelly yes suppose and the person who is got robbed he can think yes i got this because of the bad karma so i should uh, i should not say something but i should do good good things in my life so that i should not suffer in future okay yeah, very nice of you thank you so much chitanjali uh, bhagesh singh madari ंगरी a uh, problem he should uh, has I mean, try to resolve and give some correct uh, like as the king is qualified so he should give some correct view on that and he should work so like definitely each and everything happens because of karma uh, like we can get see from bhagavad gita but it is also taught in bhagavad gita we should do our duty so king should do his prescribed duty yeah he can think that is a sec- different way but he have to work on the thing ूति and uh, the whole karma yoga explains that uh, how the karma acts and then uh, good and bad reactions how karma bandha happen uh, and good and bad reactions occur to people as a result of their uh, actions and uh, the when the at each action produce a fruit and if fruit gets fructified if one has to suffer or uh, or or enjoy according to its uh, result so uh, the whole point of explaining the law of karma is not to create a post mortem of the past so karma gahana karmanagati is uh, is not because krishna did wanted to explain to arjuna further it is gahana it is gahana means is very intricacies of karma are very 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 difficult to understand for anybody so uh, so so krishna is does not want us to really use karma the theory of karma or law of karma as a post mortem tool what i mean by this is that when something bad happens to somebody uh, one should really not li- try to link it with which bad karma has produced this fruit it is understood that it if someone has probably uh, got some sickness of some kind of a illness some kind of a discomfort obviously it is due to some bad karma of past that is getting fructified that is given that uh it is so it is not to be used as a post mortem tool of the past it is meant to be used as a tool to rectify our current and future actions it, the law of karma is meant to help us rectify our current and future actions so uh law of karma has to be understood in that correct perspective so it should simply highlight the fact that we are accountable for our actions law of karma simply highlight the fact that we are responsible for our actions we cannot do something and get away we 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 have to take ownership we have to respond we, we have to be responsible and we have to own up what we have done and the outcome of the same as well so uh, the as you sow so you will reap is true 
and hence one must act responsibly today as well as in future so uh, in case of mother now without caring for good bad or ugly karma that the baby might have had done in the past life mother should do her duty her dharma her dharma is to take care of the baby comfort baby in whatever way she can and that is what she should simply be doing so she has no business in thinking of what bad karma and good karma and ugly karma this child must have done in her in her, her or her past life it is none of her business <clears throat> so similarly for the king without worrying about what bad karma this honest man must have done in his past life king must do his duty or his do his dharma by catching and punishing the robber and returning the wealth back to this person so this is uh, the this is how the the law of karma should be put into practice the past good and bad karma and their good and bad reaction is a complex complex uh, business and that is managed best by krishna and this is a this is an issue to be dealt individually by each person in krishna this is as chetan prabhuji rightly said that the person who got robbed he has to understand that uh, this can't just happen out of nowhere uh, this must be coming to him as a result of some bad activity that he must have done however uh, again he doesn't have to go back finding which activity specifically led to this uh, robbery all he has to do is to uh, surrender to god as many mother just said you have to just surrender to god and then you have to rectify it from because jab jago tab subo you know from now on was at least let me act in a surrender mode let me do some duty devotional de uh, service let me chant let me get surrender to krishna Now, krishna if i surrender to krishna krishna can break all rules krishna can burn all karma krishna can declare that if you come to me, if you surrender to me, I can do anything. But I cannot do anything to you without your own desire. So you must desire for it and then I will do it. And I, I, I'm eager to do it. I want to do it. I want all of you to come back to me. But I want first you to have that desire that you want to come back to me. I can't force you to come back to me. I can't force people to love me. That's that's not done. Uh, we can't do it in material world. Why, why will Krishna do it uh, in the spiritual world? So, so we must do our prescribed duty in every situation. As Bhagavad Gita was saying that uh, Bhagavad Gita teaches us that if we if we fail to do our prescribed duty, it will incur we will incur sin. It will incur sin for us, and hence uh, this is uh, Bhagavad Gita two point thirty three. <laughs> hence. Uh, the, our dharma has to be done. Our duty has to be done in every situation. Our, we must do our duty without focusing, without worrying about uh, whatever the good and bad karma, law of karma uh, that has led that per this particular person into this current situation. So when we see a devotee sincerely practicing devotional service, even if he has some bodily defect and uh, that would be due to the bad past karma. We don't have to care for those. We should be thinking that, okay, he is a sincere devotee. He is attached to lovingly serving Krishna. And by associating and serving such a devotee, I can also make spiritual advancement. I can also get similar desire to lovingly serve Krishna. I can also be used in service of Krishna. I can become instrument in doing something wonderful for Krishna. I can make Krishna happy by associating and serving this devotee. So this this will make my spiritual advancement. This is how I will advance in a spiritual way, in my spirituality. So that is what we should be focused on doing rather than thinking, finding faults in the devotees. Whatever the good, bad karma of a devotee is business between him and Krishna. It is between for them to figure out whether Krishna wants to give them Reactions, Krishna wants to wave off all the reactions, want to burn all reactions. It's between Krishna. It's maybe reactions could be 10 times, he may give one time effect, um, you know, whatever. It's between them and Krishna to figure it out. And none of our business. It's an individual relationship that they enjoy with Krishna. And 
accordingly Krishna can reciprocate with them. So the verse 9.30 and 9.31 of Bhagavad Gita are very important. Uh, the one 9.30 we saw and the 9.31 where uh, Krishna asked Arjuna, uh, Arjuna Pratijanehi Nane Bhakta Pranashati. So my devotees will never perish because if they are my devotees, if they surrender to me, I will ensure that they never perish. I will ensure that they come back to me. So uh, in the in the Prabhupada Lilamrut, a lot of these uh, katha comes that Jayadvata Prabhuji, before becoming, before he became sannyasi, he was uh, editing Srimad Bhagavatam. He was in charge of uh, proofreading Srimad Bhagavatam and then you know, edit a lot of Prabhupada work, uh, the dictaphone, he was in charge of that for many times. And he was in, generally in charge of producing Bhagavatam, that's what we did today. So he... Um, he once asked Srila Prabhupada that how to understand pure duty making mistakes. Now, Prabhupada himself used to do a lot of mistakes. So, once uh, Srila Prabhupada used one word uh, which was not in English a dictionary. And the pure, all, all the devotees were so naive, so innocent at that time. All the young American, European devotees were so innocent that they were saying there's they understood that, uh, I mean, they were in charge of some services. There would be services. So Prabhupada would speak into the dictaphone and then the in, in, at night and then and during the daytime, devotees would hear the dictaphone, type out everything, and then it would go for proofreading. Then finally, it would get finally typed out. And then, uh, you know, everything should go for printing. And that's how it should be a very long, uh, manual, tedious process. Uh, and these devotees uh, who thought uh, that uh, that this word is not in English, but this word is spoken by a pure devotee of Lord. And uh, so if dictionary does not have this word, we should change dictionary to include this word into the dictionary. Because pure devotee cannot make mistakes. But then they thought maybe, okay, we should go and ask Prabhupada before we actually do this. And then they, when they went to Prabhupada, they explained him so and so word that you have used in this particular uh, uh, with this context they, they understood the word that what he meant but that word they they couldn't find that word in the english dictionary so then Prabhupada said that okay you change the word substitute it with something and then you know it went ahead so uh, changing dictionary was the option that devotees were considering Prabhupada was very practical and um, very um, very uh, where, where, where he understood that uh, even if that he made a mistake and he gave them a substitute word uh, to be re to replace that particular word and they went ahead with the translation. So, uh, so, so that was so that that used to happen quite often and Prabhupada used to quote sometimes incorrectly. So, uh, Prabhupada, and so this was the question was a genuine question, genuine query of uh, Maharaj that time. And Sri Prabhupada, the response was also very perfect, very beautiful. So Sri Prabhupada said that, that this is imperfect vision of the perfection. So whatever uh, the, the faults that you see in actions of a pure devotee, uh, Prabhupada saying that this is imperfect vision of the perfection. The perfection is to see the intention and attempt to glorify and serve Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. The, in the perfection of the spiritual vision or the perfect vision is to see the intention and attempt to glorify and serve Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. We may have many other intentions even while we perform devotional service or uh, otherwise we have all kind of you know, intentions be, be, be behind our actions. So our intentions are even when performing devotional service are not always pure. Uh, we may not always uh, have a pure intention to glorify Krishna, to give pleasure to Krishna. We may uh, have many other intentions while even performing japa, performing devotional service. So we may, uh, sometimes people may want to chant um, and, and perform devotional service, devotional activities um, to, to save themselves from... Um, uh, getting into a problem with the Krishna because they've heard Krishna is the Supreme Lord and what if you know one always want to be in good books of strong uh, powerful people why it's not bad idea uh, that I'm in good books of a powerful person and for that if I had to do some japa and all that I can do that some people may do japa as out of duty okay I've got this nice home nice family nice uh, comfortable life so and I believe Krishna has given 
has played some part in that uh, you know i getting i being born in this family was not my choice i was just you know forced into this life and everything seems nice and comfortable now and if i have to thank somebody uh, apart from my parents maybe i can go and thank krishna so again this is not a pure devotional service uh, it's mix it's love for it is mixed with our own uh, you know it's our own self concentrated uh, you know self ego circled uh, devotional service some may want to be known in the society as uh, devotees therefore they must be performing devotional service some born amongst devotee circle also some wants to be number one book distributor some may have a desire to be praised by other devotees some may want to look like a good devotee and with all those intentions one may perform devotional service so our intentions may not be pure but and with these impure intentions even if we perform perfect devotional service it still remains imperfect with so much impure intentions if our intent is impure but if we pronounce mantra correctly if we chant remember all shlokas perfectly uh, and uh, you know whatever service was given to us if, if we do that perfectly but, but our intent the underlying intent is wrong then such service is imperfect it is not complete service so uh, even if we are speaking perfectly as i you know as i spoke the glorify we our desire we don't have a desire to glorify krishna our desire is material uh, and to the material external vision this may appear to be uh, wonderful or glorious but uh, it is still a useless labor because such a speaker cannot make lot of spiritual advancement but rather end up boosting one's own ego he is glorifying himself instead of glorifying krishna does it mean that the material covering is completely useless can be completely ignored uh, no <clears throat> So again, Jayadvata Maharaj was asked by Srila Prabhupada himself to edit um, all his work perfectly before it goes for publication. Now, why were they doing it? Because he wrote, Maharaj actually wrote an article that editing the unchangeable, because whatever Prabhupada was speaking is eternal truth, is transcendental knowledge. And the tough task was which was given to Jayadvata Maharaj was to edit it. To rectify it, correct it, and uh, you know, so that uh, so that it becomes perfect book. You know, Topad uh, wanted his books to be um, not only to look good, not only to have have wonderful, beautiful pictures in it, but also to have uh, in, in it's it should be considered at a very considered rated very highly among scholars also, and for that to happen, it should be error free as much as possible. So he was very passionate. He was very focused on ensuring that none of his books have errors. And for Maharaj, this is really proofreading. There used to be, they used to proofread books for 20, 20 times, you know, before it uh, the final copy goes for printing. So uh, you can't imagine uh, proofreading Bhagavatam for 20 times and uh, reading through these chapters, uh, pointing out all errors, rectifying all errors, and how difficult that job uh, in the manual situation must have been, uh, we cannot even imagine, you know, with the computers, everything, the whole thing has become so simple nowadays. And still we find trouble. We think it's very troublesome to edit. Uh, but imagine what must have been, what must have been uh, the case uh, when in the pre-computer era in 1970s, when all this was happening. So, and this because why why Prabhupada was so much focused in getting a perfect book out because those who are going to read this book today uh, will go for book distribution so in Navi Mumbai and and those people who are going to receive this book they have material vision so book should be appealing materially it should be appealing materially then only they will be ready to explore its spiritual potencies now book has spiritual transformational potencies book if you read Bhagavad Gita, your life can get transformed. You can become pure devotee of Krishna and you can go back to Krishna in one lifetime. All that exists. All that exists in the verses and the purports given by Prabhupada. But a person with materialistic vision, uh, if we find fault in the external appearance of the book, if the binding is bad, the picture is bad, the printing quality is bad, the pictures are not, the images are not there or images are, you know, the 
the, the fonts are off, page numbering is bad, index is not there, spelling mistakes are there, grammatical errors are there. Now that kind of a book may not appeal to a person who has material vision and all of the new devotees, they come with having material vision. So for them, it should first, at the first instance, it should become appealing to them and then only they will be prepared to explore the spiritual potency of that book. There'll be, a, you know, then the book can be of proper use to them. But if they if they find a book very shabbily prepared, they may not be even willing to explore it or read it uh, in, in, in that condition. So the same logic we can extend for maintaining nice, clean, beautiful temples for Lord. Uh, it's not meant for, uh, it's not for the comfort of the people, those who live in the temple. It is meant to attract the attention of the person. A, one, a new devotee will not want to go to a filthy place where there are cockroaches and rats. Even though Lord is present, you know, he has to be maintained. We have to, we have to maintain basic cleanliness and a nice, clean, beautiful uh, place where, where, where the new devotee is. They, they, they can come, they can uh, they can sit there, they can, then they can have, they, they, will, they should feel like sitting at that place and spending some time in front of Lord, then talk to devotees and then, uh, you know, get into conversations with them, ask them about scriptures, uh, hear about Lord's glories and then become devotees themselves. But all of that can happen provided, uh, you know, they, they, have a, they have a nice clean place to uh, where, where Lord is worshipped. There should be some initial attraction that they need to have, and that attraction has to be material, because these people are coming with material vision only. So, if anything is not appealing to them materially, will not uh, the, its spiritual potency it will remain unexplored by those people. They will never get into exploring the spiritual potency if they don't find, uh, you know, it is materially non-appealing. A uh, beautiful verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto, fifth uh, chapter, of eleventh verse, that says that uh, now we say that pronunciation of verses can be faulty. Some may not be able to pronounce the verse properly, but uh, but their service should also should still be considered as perfect service. Here, the the Bhagavatam further goes further, says that even if it is imperfectly composed. Even the Sanskrit is composed by in in, a, in it's not perfectly composed. It has grammatical errors. Even the original Sanskrit text also, even if that is imperfectly composed, um, it does not matter. Such literature uh, had to retain their transformational values. The revolution, the the, uh, the translation says that. Um, on the other hand, that literature which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, form, pastime, etc. of the Unlimited Supreme Lord is a different creation full of transcendental words directed towards bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. A big statement, but, but a true statement. Now, Bhagavad Gita and Shri Bhagavatam should bring revolution in the life of impious people. Misdirected civilization. All of us come in this category. So, and that revolution uh, will come. Such transcendental literatures, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. And this is what we are expected to do. We have to speak of pronouncing wrongly. Uh, even if it is composed wrongly, it does not lose its spiritual potency. <clears throat> Prabhupada further talks about, uh, in the purport, Prabhupada further talks about uh, his devotees, uh, the disciples, uh, not being accepted by by the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya and people in general in India at that time. And uh, so a lot of them were thinking that uh, uh, there was various Sampradaya after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left, uh, there is a Nityananda Sampradaya, there is a Advaita Sampradaya, and then there were many um, Many bifurcations, uh, fractions came up in the Krishna consciousness. The, all of them claiming to be preaching the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. So, uh, and all of them claim that teaching Krishna consciousness and giving initiation, diksha, etc., acting as a Goswami was considered to be their monopoly of certain families because we are born in this family. 
this is our business. This is our monopoly business. Now, Prabhupada, uh, what he did is he made a, included a beautiful sentence in this particular part. He, he turned this whole argument upside down and he said that you are saying that because you are born in this family, uh, teaching, preaching Krishna consciousness is your philosophy, uh, is your monopoly, uh, right? But Prabhupada turned the whole argument upside down saying that uh, the 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 <clears throat> the Goswami title actually is the monopoly of a pure devotee. Goswami title who can who can initiate, who can preach, who can initiate disciples, uh, and who can act as a preacher in, in the movement. Um, now that Goswami title, anybody who can use Goswami, uh, now that title is a monopoly of the pure devotee. So unless you are pure devotee yourself. Unless you are a pure devotee, you should not claim that title. No matter, and if you happen to be a pure devotee, it does not matter which family you are born into, what has been your past. Kesha Maharaj says uh, that every saint had past and every sinner has future. Every saint had past and every sinner has future, which means um, the saint doesn't become saint by birth. Uh, he probably had undergone the process of purification. And in his previous life, he might have had uh, done wrong activities as well. However, when we look at him today, if he's engaged in the loving devotional service of the Lord 24 by 7 and using all that he possess in the service of the Lord, for the pleasure of the Lord, he should be accepted. <clears throat> now, what he did when he was a child or when he his youth, doesn't matter today. <clears throat> so, and on the other side, if you are born in a, uh, and this person might not even be born in the pure Brahmana families also, the Western disciples of Sri none of them were, uh, you know, they were all born in meat eaters' family. They were eating meat right from their birth. And until they came in contact with Sri they were leading a, a Western life, like Western lifestyle, which had all these uh, elements in it. And but they, uh, but they became pure devotees uh, after meeting Sri Prabhupada, after accepting Gaudiya Vishnu principles, after studying Bhagavad Gita, after chanting, after doing Sankirtan, after doing so much seva for Prabhupada, helping him in you know establishing and spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. They even they became pure devotees. Their karma changed. What to do? Even though they were not born in Brahmanical typical Brahmanical old families. Uh, they, Prabhupada gave them initiation, Prabhupada gave them Brahman Diksha, Prabhupada gave them Sanyas Diksha. And uh, that was not really uh, uh, liked by many of his god brothers. Many of his god brothers, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, uh, when he left his uh, body, left his material world, he wanted uh, Gaudiya, and that when he was present, the <clears throat> the the Gaudiya Mutt was considered to be a very power center, was a power center of preaching in India. And uh, the, they were aggressively going to different cities in India, opening temples, preaching aggressively at that time. And everything was happening under the leadership and um, single leadership of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta uh, Sarsaji Thakur. But when he, he was about to leave and then he suggested, he told his followers, disciples, that you should form a governing body and uh, and then conduct affairs. Now, they did that and they tried it because it was instruction given by their Guru Maharaj, and but that didn't work because for a disciple, it is easy to have one line of control. You know, I have my spiritual master who is a representative of Krishna. Whatever he speaks, I follow. However, I have now suddenly, instead of one spiritual master, I have five people in the committee discussing and um, you know debating and then come on, coming up with one uh, answer to me. And that answer uh, might be, my, my guru, my Mara, my guru might be aligned or may, might not be aligned with that answer. Now that creates a confusion. That creates a, that this is single line of authority, control, get disturbed. Now I can... Now, uh, you know, there could be confusion whether I should or I should not follow or uh, agree to this solution given. And a lot of Sri Prabhupada, God brothers, uh, you know, they didn't like this committee. So they all parted. So then they appointed somebody 
as a head and then he had his own problems then a lot of um, others the those who didn't wanted him to be their head they created their own sampradayas and the whole one the it's a, the one whole big powerful institution of gauriya mart got fragmented and um, and and Prabhupada kept distance and everybody then tried doing their little bit so all of those uh, Prabhupada was asking them to come together during his uh, struggle days in india when he went to us also he had a donor mr singhania who was ready to finance the construction of a temple in america and uh, all somebody needed to do is to go to the government of india and ask for permission to remit this foreign exchange out of india for this purpose and a lot of these god brothers lot of shilpapad god brothers were very close to government at that time they were uh, having very influential uh, you know following in india and they most of them could have easily helped however they kept a distance saying that we cannot help prabhat lila amrut there's a there's a chapter called crying in the wilderness and uh, which uh, which which describes his struggle uh, to preach a krishna consciousness in india and also after going to america in the initial period and um, crying in the wilderness i mean this title itself is is is, is such that uh, you know one, one cannot read this without crying yourself and uh, so much struggle so much struggle prabhat had to go through um, before he could see some light at the end of the tunnel when the when the new york temple had happened uh, devotees came into his uh, movement and then it started spreading as it from then onward it spread like a like a magic wand uh, but but until then uh, to reach that point uh, the 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 persistent uh, the, uh, the 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 patience and the enthusiasm um, and then the confidence in krishna that propan demonstrated was parallel in the history yeah. anybody at that age and in such adverse conditions would have given up saying that maybe krishna I don't want me to do this I, maybe you have some other plan let me go back to vrindavana and uh, spend rest of my life in chanting your name but uh, propan persisted propan continued uh, despite of all those and then when he returned with a bus full of western devotees back to vrindavan uh, the those of uh, you know the <clears throat> the devotees he brought with us many of them were very appreciative but at the same time many of them were not very appreciative as well saying that uh, many of them even thought uh, has spoken that uh, propad was a vaishya uh, he was in a business that's why he could manipulate those people westerners and got them to learn bhagavad gita or become but we teach to elite people in india who are spiritually minded very uh, and then so what he has done is good but not very good you know we do our our things are much better our endeavors are much uh, superior to his whatever so uh, so his disciple because his disciples because they were not born in the traditional indian brahmin families uh, were not getting the same respect from the indian um, uh, indian sampradaya so and and so so prabhat right further that uh, the in the in the purport that uh, and he gives parallel examples that uh, this is not the first time that somebody has done anything like this uh, rupa goswami sanatan goswami um, had practically become mahmadians and had therefore changed their names to dabir khas and shakir malik but shri chaitanya mahaprabhu himself made them goswamis therefore goswami title is not hereditary it is earned earned by becoming a pure devotee of krishna not just because you are born in a mishra family or sharma family or some chaturvedi family uh, you don't automatically you know get that kind of a degree get that get that kind of a respect it has to be earned by becoming a pure devotee of the of lord the word goswami refers to one who can control his senses who is master of the senses a devotee is not controlled by the senses but is controller of the senses consequently he should be called swami or goswami even though he may not be born in the goswami family if we consider the bodily defect of a vaishnava 
we should understand that we are committing an offense at the lotus feet of the Vaishnava. Now, Prabhupada talks about the negative side of, you know, when they have this kind of a vision, but what it can do to us, Prabhupada is talking about that uh, towards the conclusion of this uh, purport. Um, every devotee should be ready to take instructions from a superior Vaishnava. And a superior Vaishnava must be ready to help an inferior Vaishnava in all respects. One is superior or inferior according to his spiritual development in Krishna consciousness. One is forbidden to observe the activities of a pure Vaishnava from material point of view. One should therefore avoid observing a pure devotee externally, but should try to see the internal features and understand how he is engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In this way, one can avoid seeing the pure devotees from, um, from a material point of view and thus one can gradually become purified devotee himself. <coughs> um, the defects in devotee summary I will summarize and then we'll go for any question and says that will be. <clears throat> when one thus criticizes a pure devotee, he commits an offense, Vaishnava Aparad. That is very obstructive and dangerous for those who desire to advance in Krishna consciousness. A person cannot derive any spiritual benefit when he offends the lotus feet of a Vaishnava. Everyone should therefore be very careful not to be jealous of an advanced empowered of an empowered Vaishnava or Shuddha Vaishnava. It is also an offense to consider an empowered Vaishnava an object of disciplinary action. It is offensive to try to give him advice or to correct him. It is offensive to try to give him advice or to correct him. One can distinguish between a neophyte Vaishnava and an advanced Vaishnava by their activities. An advanced Vaishnava is always situated at a spiritual master and a neophyte is always considered his disciple. A spiritual master must not be subjected to the advice of a disciple, nor should a spiritual master be obliged to take instructions from those who are not his disciple. This is the sum and substance of Srila Rupa Goswami's advice in the sixth verse. So we basically we discuss that uh, how uh, devotees uh, how of Lord can also have fat faults. How devotees can manifest uh, sickness. Loss. They may be externally suffering from uh, different diseases. Their bodies might be might not be as beautiful as um, some of us might have. Uh, some of us, uh, and then, then and they may have physical faults in their actions as well. As they speak, Prabhupada uh, had again a Bengali accent. Uh, so his English was not uh, most accurate. His grammar was not the best. And his accent often was not understood correctly. So, so all of that uh, one should not consider uh, while looking at a pure Vaishnava. All we need to do is how, what is his intention and how is, what is his desire, what are his actions and as long as his actions are lovingly serving Krishna, his desire is to, only desire is to please Krishna and we should accept him as, uh, as our spiritual master and we should accept all his instructions, we should try and act according to those instructions and uh, advance uh, you know purify ourselves and advance in our own spiritual life so the other couple of uh, opportunities for such uh, engagements with krishna is uh japa session in the morning and reading of uh, bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita in the evening we'll see if uh, anybody has any questions Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandas Pranam. Thank you very much for the very nectarian and very informative and very uh, much required session because uh, this is the usual tendency of mind to prove oneself smarter than the other one. And here, because we are in the
and that is definitely that will definitely from making invasion of which is the most dangerous one and i was actually perceiving one point when you uh, you first asked the first question or for discussion uh, when you gave the example of uh, a mother and a baby and before that uh, two questions uh, were there prior to that and uh, if we are seeing defects in the vaishnavas uh, i personally perceive that that is the some kind of jealous or enviousness in our mind that uh, actually that actually drives us to find those kind of conclusions in the vaishnavas otherwise uh, they are as you mentioned all through the session that how they are defects really means defects are not even touching them and uh, how pure even you mentioned beautifully that how the uh, disciples of srila prabhupad uh, looked at is that english word mistake that we should better correct the dictionary than to uh, than to give uh, than to ask uh, prabhupad for the correction of that particular word so uh, that is the wonderful one but uh, hopefully i was the, at that particular time when you mentioned that example the first one of mother and baby that i was actually perceiving that this is our enviousness that comes out and when we try to find defects in the vaishnavas or our senior devotees or wherever which at whatever point of time we can so hopefully means i would just like to get a clarification from you like whether that understanding is correct or uh, otherwise the other uh, other so it's a material aspect. vision you know yes, we may sir. have we, we we see things materially because you know all the new devotees they see things materially you know how we see things materially uh, materially you know we have our own position that we know we are something and uh, in comparison of us as we are we see the world here we are and then this is the world so obviously then the the, the way we will look at it is those who are inferior to me and superior to me and those who are equal to me we will also have that vision and uh, <clears throat> it could be with the reference to the english language that uh, i know english language well and um, if uh, if i want somebody to become my guru and he is going to preach me in english uh, i think i will expect him to have good english right better than uh, better than my english uh, it's it's a natural uh tendency it's in this is material vision now we can't help it because this is how you know we've been taught we've been conditioned all right from our birth we don't we doesn't this does not show humility and that's true that's why we have to learn humility uh it shows arrogance on our part and that's true because we have to give up arrogance and become humble but that's the transformation that we will have when we accept devotion service but and of see to be able to uh, to be receptive of that philosophy to be receptive of those instructions and uh, one this doesn't have to listen to those instructions one has to act on those instructions so we need far greater conviction so materially <clears throat> it should be appealing enough for us to accept it and uh, practice it and uh, so so from that perspective that from that perspective uh it's, it's our presentation should be as accurate as we can make it however uh is some faults will inevitably come and um, if we if if the devotee has the piety enough uh the humility enough uh some humility some faith some piety he will overlook it and he will concentrate on the on the on the on the, on the topic because it's like physics english is written in english physics is also physics book is also written in english it's great if one doesn't make mistakes while talking english in the physics class but grammatical mistakes made in the physics class does not change the physics rules so uh, one has to understand that uh, beyond a uh, language uh, is only a carrier of meaning Uh, you know, if we understand the intent and uh, the the content, then the language doesn't really matter. Uh, even if it's conveyed in a faulty way, it can still be understood correctly as and applied correctly. So yes, it is partly our own ego that uh, prevent us or uh, that 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 uh, that shows all the faults and uh, 
next thing that the mind will tell us that therefore you should not listen to them and you should move away from them. So in order for our presentation to become good so that at least people, those who are with neutral vision, they should not find it prima facie incorrect so much that you know, they refuse. They refuse to even hear further. And it could be out of uh, jealousy, out of their own personal ego. Uh, and that is what material vision is all about. Material vision is all about I, me, myself. Isn't it? Uh, how I can benefit, what it is in it, what is in it for me, how I can be, uh, how I can become better, uh, you know, how can benefit and how, uh, you know, so everything about I, me, myself is what uh, material vision is, how I can enjoy, how I can own, how I can consume uh, more. And that's what material vision is. So, And that same thing goes when we, uh, we, we compare obviously then what we know, what they know, or I know so much better. So why should I hear, why should I listen to such person? Can't even speak proper English. What's a, uh, what is the guarantee that they will speak the spiritual truth correctly? Uh, and all that can be very faulty as well. So that's natural uh, for us to have that kind of a vision. And jealousy can be one part of it as well. Thank you very much, Guruji. Hare Krishna. Nandak Pranam. So uh, what I could understand is the crux is that we need to find that actually we are here to achieve Krishna in this life and the devotees who are helping us, we should actually uh, feel very grateful towards them and ultimately in any situation we should try to understand that ultimate objective is Krishna. And, and then ultimately... Uh, yeah, that. see the problem comes when we see faults in devotees when the devotee is false Suffered heart attacks, even in America. Should pure devotee be suffering heart attack? Some devotees are, you know, Kadam Kanan Maharaj had cancer. Now, is it due to bad karma? What bad karma he did that he got cancer? Now, now these questions will pop up naturally to a uh, mind of a new devotee. And, uh, but that is, this is, this is more from that point of view that when we see devotees, um, then this is not this is the what what is it that we should think when we see devotees? Now, Kanan Kanan Maharaj getting cancer and because of which he left his body a year back before. Uh, what is in it for us? How should we understand it? Because this is this kind of instru these instructions help us see those things in perspective, correct perspective, and not get confused uh, when when those situations we um, come across. And that is, Kadam Kadam Maharaj is at a distance. We may see some devotees uh, with whom we interact on a day-to-day -day basis can undergo some difficulties. Uh, and and then, then also we may apply the same words uh, there also. So it's very practical words uh, we, we can use in day-to-day -day life. And not Thank every you. everywhere we have to apply this devotee of uh, this those may not be only with regard to our seniors. Uh, with all the devotees with whom we daily interact, uh, those we those who are equal or, or even juniors, as long as they are sincerely trying to become Krishna conscious, all their faults one should overlook. We should rectify them obviously to the extent wherever required, but uh, you know we we shouldn't focus too much on the faults. There will be faults, but that's why we are all here. And um, so one should be ready to, uh, this is this will help in our interaction with other devotees also. Not only with our seniors and spiritual masters, and, but overall, while interacting within devotee community, this will be very, very helpful if this knowledge exists. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Dhanvat Pranam. Very wonderful answer you gave for that. Hare Krishna. We don't have any other questions. So let's uh, conclude today's session. And uh, we have book distribution in Nalu Mumbai. Anybody who is willing to come uh, will be happy. Uh, so please reach out to Vikas Prabhuji and Ashwin Mahashwara Prabhuji. They can share with you location. And uh, try and we'll try and distribute your proper books. Uh, to so try and assist whoever can. Very wonderful. Kaya uh, Mabit, you have a question? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam. 
Uh, I have a very small question. Sorry uh, for uh, the delay. I wanted to ask, uh, uh, as in sometimes what happens is uh, like we, like in fam family settings, sometimes our relatives, they, uh, you know, try to trigger us in certain situations where we are not able to, you know, uh, as in control our uh, mindset and we sometimes you know uh, our emotions get disturbed disturbed and we sometimes you know uh, think bad about them and might you know utter some some words which are not uh, you know as a devotee we should not be we, we should not be our behavior so and you know on that note uh, people uh, sometimes you know tell us that as a devotee you should not uh, you know say these words because whatever japa you are doing whatever sadhana and whatever you know positive karmas you are doing will be you know they will not be counted and they will go in vain so just wanted to uh, you to please uh, clarify on that note if you could Hare Krishna. So, yeah, Hare Krishna so we'll have situations where we will have so we'll continue to deal with the material world and the material world is uh, filled with materialistic people and as we will interact with them there can be clashes there can be moments of clashes with them and uh, we, we need to kind of see what Prabhupada did in those situations and then we just need to learn from Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhupada uh, Mumbai when the landlord sold Hare Krishna land to Sri Prabhupada he also tried do uh, tried doing a similar deal with somebody else. He sold the same plot of land to somebody else as well. And then there was a court battle. And uh, Prabhupada fought hard, fought very hard for that battle. There were uh, devotees who were uh, Western devotees who were living in the, on that plot. Uh, Lord himself was there in a very tin shade with uh, rats and cockroaches flying all over. Uh, there was uh, snakes, there are rats, cockroaches, and all kind of. Uh, it was a very horrible place uh, for deities to be kept, and devotees, the Western, especially these Western devotees, to live. Very horrible place. Um, uh, yesterday, Nata Prabhuji mentioned in the class that Bhima Prabhu used to live on this plot at that time, and um, many times his uh, he would get beaten by rats. His foot would bleed in the morning when they would wake up. They real they used to realize that oh, the the, the feet are bleeding because the rats beat them at night during night in such horrible situations devotees lived, uh, so that the battle could be, um, that there was a battle that to be fought and everybody fought that battle. Prabhupada fought that battle. So, uh, there are moments there will come moments in our lives where we have to uh, where we have to put up a fight and then we fight just like. We have to fight. We have to fight on the principles of Krishna consciousness. And to protect our Krishna consciousness, we should fight. Uh, not to show others how we are better devotees than them, we should fight. We should not fight for those reasons. So as long as, uh, and, and also we need to understand that we are not yet become pure devotees. We are uh, we are work in progress and we are very much uh, have all our uh, anarthas with us, within us. And uh, they will pop up. Uh, you know, sometime or the other, all we need to do is to continue doing Japas, the Apichetu Sibura uh, Then That verse says that should never give up, give up our Japa. We should never give up our process of devotion service. A process of hearing and chanting should never be given up. And as long as we do that, these blips will come. The, the, the wrong moments will come and go. As long as we continue to do our japa, do our reading, and do our hearing of uh, Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. If you keep that going, uh, everything will be all right. Everything, nothing will be lost. And anyway, devotional service, uh, whatever we do now also is now never lost. Uh, but it can get tossed. It can get halted. And uh, if we if we don't continue, uh, we, we may have to, we will have to come back again to uh, start from where we left off in the previous life. So. Uh, so to, why to waste another lifetime uh, in in this uh, in this world? So why not make best use of what opportunity we have and then get out of this world? So that should be our motive, and uh, um, and and that is how we should act. I mean, those situations will come when people will 
intimidate us and uh, trigger us, as you said, and uh, we may fall prey sometimes. We may not uh, always get triggered or always fall to their tricks all the time, but sometimes we might. So all we need uh, to do is to uh, to speak to devotees, somebody, and explain them that the situation and seek guidance. And that how that is how we can uh, we can keep ourselves on the track. We don't get tripped from the track. And at the same time, we uh, learn to deal with such uh, intimidations as and when they come. And uh, since we live in this material world, they will be there. You know. So it's a. Uh, I was listening to somebody that uh, saw some statement, one statement that it's not a uh, Krishna consciousness does not promise you a calm sea, a uh, uh, motionless sea. Where there are no waves and no, uh, you know, tires, everything is nice, calm, but it gives you an unthinkable shit. What it means is basically, uh, as long as you do your japa and uh, reading and chanting, hearing and chanting the shravanam kirtanam, as long as you do, uh, keep doing that, and you never give up company of devotees, you keep talking to devotees, keep sharing uh, what uh, your heart with the devotees. If you keep doing these three three things and uh, some practical service, whatever you can, these four things can help you navigate through all bad situations. We'll never let you sink. Sink means uh, it it's becomes an unsinkable ship. The Titanic was not an unsinkable ship, uh, but this will be. If you do those four things, you will be unsinkable. No matter how rough the sea becomes, no matter how high the waves comes, no matter which storm comes, which the water, how fast the wind blows, uh, you will not sink. You will always float. You will have to have these four things, uh, hearing, chanting, duty association, and some practical devotion service. These four things, if you keep doing, you will never sink uh, in this lifetime. And uh, you know, no matter how hard the weather is, bad the weather is, you will uh, remain unsinkable. But if you give up any of these things, you might uh, might lose lose out to the situations and then uh, you know it, it never get lost it get halted and then you'll have to start from where you left off in the previous life so in the next life so that is how you can deal with but specific questions yeah we can discuss offline and uh, you know specific situation you can discuss offline and we can try and see what how else how otherwise you could have responded to that situation that's how we can discuss that thank you so much Prabhuji. Hare Krishna very well explained thank you thank you yeah, thank you Prabhuji. see if there are more questions in the chat box yeah. well, no more questions I think we can conclude this session we will meet uh, continue with the nectar of instruction uh, in the next verse uh, again you know, Sri Rupa Goswami is taking us deeper into uh, into the so now we'll start to realize the nectar uh, in the of this book. You know, uh, I was I used to wonder why how can instructions have nectar, but uh, as we move further from seventh verse onwards, uh, it's all nectar. I mean, it's all nectar even now, but uh, it become more nectarian uh, from now onwards till the eleventh verse, uh, where Goswami will take this discussion to a completely higher level. So please continue attending these sessions and. And the discussions of technical instructions as we uh, progress together and learn together. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you, Prabhuji. Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you. Krishna Prabhuji, thank you, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you.